At some point during the examination, you'll be asked to lie prone or face down on a special table. This right here is a standard chiropractic adjusting bench. It's firm and uh, it's got a headpiece that can tilt up or down. Your chiropractor may palpate your spine all the way from the coccyx to the atlas or occiput, like this. The chiropractor is assessing each individual vertebrae for movement. And what we're trying to determine is whether or not one or several vertebrae are not moving properly in relationship to the ones above and below it. In the lumbar spine, there's definitely some individual movement that could be felt as you press along the sides of these vertebrae. When you get towards the thoracic uh, vertebrae, remember they have a rib attachment and the rib attachment starts at the transverse process and goes to the front and inserts into the sternum so the thoracic vertebrae will feel more rigid because they have that stability. As you move into the cervical region, you'll again feel more movement for each of these individual cervical vertebrae. Now what does an abnormal finding feel like? If one or two vertebrae are fixated or aren't moving properly and you feel individual movements and then you hit one area and it feels a bit more rigid than the, than the one above and below, then that's an indication that that particular segment may be fixated or misaligned in some way. Those are the typical areas that the chiropractor will adjust. Let's say I sense a fixation at T6 or T7, this area. The chiropractor would put his hands down, take a deep breath, inhale, come down and put a small impulse into that joint. You check it again and determine if it's moving properly. And if it is, then the adjustment went successfully. Now the chiropractor might also check your leg lengths and what that feels like. You're lying face down, you'll feel the chiropractor uh, grasp your ankles and the soles of your feet and maybe push uh, towards your head to take out any slack. And what the chiropractor is looking at is the level of your heels to see if they're in line. If the heels don't line up properly, let's say there's about a one inch differential between uh, the heels, then that's an indication that you have a problem occurring somewhere in the spine, in the pelvis, even as high up as the atlas. Here's an illustration of a situation where the left leg would look like it's one inch shorter than the right. It would be something like this. Okay, so you could imagine, you know, going down the legs here, that there's a differential in the length of these legs. And this may not be the cause. This is one of the things that can cause an uneven leg length is if your pelvis is twisted like that, okay? And even if it is, is it, be, is it mechanical? Is it, does it originate at the L5-S1? Does the ilium on that side, is it twisted or rotated in a way so that it's lifting up that leg, okay? Which could occur right here. Is there a problem in the neck up high that's causing the muscles along the left side of the spine to tighten and pull up that pelvis, causing that apparent short leg on the left side. So we don't know what the cause is until we do further tests. A least likely possibility is an anatomically shorter left leg. Now those are rarely seen, but they do occur, and that could be found in people who have had trauma to their leg, a fracture, uh, or some other event that caused that left leg to not grow as long as the right leg. Once the tests are done and the chiropractor arrives at a diagnosis, then treatment is directed to correct that particular diagnosis. The cervical vertebrae can be palpated for mechanical restrictions in several ways. One of them is to grab the spinous, push it to the left or right, check for proper motion, both sides. If you feel that it's not turning to one side versus the other, there's a good chance that it's restricted on the side that it uh, can't turn to. 
When the chiropractor adjusts your low back, you'll most likely lie on your side and the chiropractor will grab your shoulder, put a hand here, like this, pull it, turn you over, and come down and adjust your back. For neck adjustments, some chiropractors adjust the neck in the supine position where you're lying on your back, face up. Some chiropractors adjust while you're sitting in a special chair. In this demonstration, we're doing the supine cervical adjustment. The patient's head is at the head of the table. The chiropractor may press along the sides of your cervical vertebrae just to get a final assessment. You may feel your neck being turned to the side. And again, the chiropractor's trying to determine which set of vertebrae may be fixated or stuck or rotated in one particular area. And when one is found, a typical neck adjustment may look like this, where you take one hand, support the weight of the head. That's actually the support hand. And this is the adjusting hand. Let's say it's the fourth cervical vertebrae is fixated on the right side. You put your finger here, turn, and just put a really slight uh, push into that segment to impart some movement back into the neck. And you reassess for movement and you should, should feel better movement after the adjustment. You may get a little bit of a neck stretch, neck massage towards the end, traction, and that's a typical neck adjustment. So what you just saw is a general explanation of a typical chiropractic adjustment to the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, and the cervical spine. What is this video good for? Well, if you haven't been to a chiropractor, this gives you a little bit of an idea of what to expect and the logic behind what a chiropractor does. Again, uh, it's all about palpating, feeling the spinal segments for restrictions or misalignments, and using the hands to put a small force into the area of misalignment or restriction so that that segment can move better. Whenever a spinal segment is not moving properly, then it's going to alter the way the rest of the spine moves. You want every, everything to be aligned so that the whole unit functions properly. The neck area is particularly vulnerable to this. Whenever you have anterior weight bearing of the neck, which looks like this, that puts a constant stretch on the spinal cord. Now we know that the spinal cord is an extension of the brain, and it's the means by which the brain transmits uh, signals to the rest of your body. Signals that involve motor function, that is movement, strength, coordination, and sensation, your ability to sense things in your extremities and your skin. So we want those nerves to be unencumbered as best as we can. The other problem that can come with misaligned vertebrae is that uh, it changes the biomechanics of your spinal column. This can lead to advanced degenerative changes such as arthritis, and it could cause pain to one side of your body, like in your hip, or your low back, or your neck. If you haven't been to a chiropractor and you're experiencing any kind of musculoskeletal symptoms that involve pain, numbness, tingling, loss of flexibility, inability to turn to one side versus the left side, or anything that's out of the ordinary, consider seeing a chiropractor. Make sure you go to one that's experienced, who has um, a good reputation, has good reviews, and is recommended by uh, someone who you know. And do your due diligence, uh, know what to expect from a chiropractor, the risks and the benefits, and hopefully this video has given you good information that will help you make this decision.